fifth, excuse me, the fourth type of a reaction, and this is a double replacement reaction. A double replacement reaction. And as we have been doing, you're going to see the general form in a little cartoon. So, so, not working here.
it is largely insoluble. Okay? Because remember, we said one of these things has to be a precipitate. If it's insoluble, is it a precipitate? Yes. Okay? Yes. I is insoluble. DR means that it de decomposes slash slash reacts in water. And the question mark means that we have no information available or that that does not exist. So I point my arrow. Or actually, my arrow is not there. See my little marker right there? Okay. As I read this, this is calcium chloride. I follow down. I follow over. Here's calcium. I follow it over. Chloride. Calcium chloride gives me an S. So calcium chloride is soluble in water. I come over here. Okay. Here is chromium-3 oxide. Chromium-3 oxide is insoluble. I come right here to DR. Copper-2 iodide decomposes or reacts with water. Okay, let's find another one. Here's an SS, a slightly soluble. So calcium silicate is slightly soluble in water. Do we understand how we read our chart? Okay. So let's go back to the PowerPoint. We hear that we're here, right? All right. So we're back on our PowerPoint. And I have steps that I follow when I'm dealing with these two aqueous salts. The first step is I swap cations. I swap cations to determine the possible products. My second step is I check the solubility of both products. If both products are soluble, then a reaction will not occur. It's no reaction if they both are soluble. Now, does that say if one is soluble and the other is slightly soluble? Does it say that? No. So if it's slightly soluble and soluble, a reaction will occur. <clears throat> if both are soluble, then no reaction. At least one reactant must be soluble and aqueous to have a reaction. So if both were insoluble, would it react? <laughs> no. One has to be soluble. When we're doing double replacement reactions, we need to use the appropriate symbols. Okay, so let's go over the symbols once again. What is S? Solid. What's AQ? Aqueous. Now, we haven't dealt with these arrows. Okay, I don't like using the arrows. Okay, I don't like using the arrows because we've already got symbols instead of using the arrows. An up arrow just means that it's a gas given off. Okay, so what do I like better than an up arrow? The parenthesis G. Down arrow means that it's a solid, it's a precipitate. So what do I like better than the down arrow? No, it's a, it's a precipitate, it's a solid. Yes, I like the S better than the down arrow. I'm just showing you so when you see those, you know what they mean. Okay, an up arrow and a down arrow. But as far as I'm concerned, I would use a G and an S instead of those.
So these are the rules that we need to follow. So let's check out and let's see what we got going on. Now my very first, what does letter A say of my double replacement? To do what? Determine the possible products. So what I need to do is I need to look and I say, okay, if I would have this double reaction occurring, I am going to switch, I am going to switch my cations. So I'm going to plop AG and NA. So when I do so, I'm going to get AG CL. Now, is that the correct? Okay, is that correct when I'm writing them out? What is silver? What is silver charge wise? What is silver charge wise? One. What is chlorine? Minus one. Is that right? Absolutely. My other possible product is sodium nitrate. Is this the right formula for sodium nitrate? Absolutely. Now, do I want to go through and balance this? I don't want to balance this yet because if I balance it and then it doesn't work, I, I did all for naught. Alright, so I'm going to check to see if this works. And here's a big problem, folks. What are we checking on our solubility chart? These? Are we checking these right here? Or are we checking these? Okay. We are checking the products. So I want you to tell me, what is in the box for silver chloride? Silver chloride. Silver chloride is, from what I'm seeing, an I, right? Sodium and nitrate. Sodium nitrate, I'm reading an S. Can we all agree on that? So now, I look back at my rules. If both products are soluble, then no reaction. Is that the case here? No, that is not the case. So, I look at letter D. At least one reactant must be soluble in aqueous. Do I have one that is soluble? Absolutely. Now, all I need to do is I need to write in which of which these are in terms of the states. So, which one is going to be a solid? Silver chloride. So I'm going to put the S there. This is soluble, so I'm putting an AQ there. My final thing is, balance it. And as I look at this guy, guess what? It's already balanced. So, see the thought process A through E we're going through? The thought process. So when I determine, yeah, I've got two salts here. It's just a double replacement. I need to go through that thought process. Let's go through another thought process here. Okay. Now what iron do I have here? Iron 3, right? Iron 3. So, what are my possible products when I swap my cations? What's one? Just somebody. Give me one. Iron chloride. Which iron? Iron 3 chloride. My other possible product is going to be potassium bromide. Once again, second step, 
check solubility of both of these. Now, can you see why it does matter? Iron 2 and iron 3 are both on your solubility chart, right? Are they the same? No. So I'm looking at iron 3 chloride. What do I get? What's my chart tell me iron 3 chloride is? Soluble. I'm going to put a little S there. Potassium bromide. Potassium bromide is soluble, right? So, my next step, okay, it's like Peyton said, my next step is, if both products are soluble, then no reaction. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, am I going to leave it like this? No, because that looks like what? That looks like something's going on, correct? So I'm going to go back, I'm going to get rid of this, and say, hey, there is a no reaction for that one. That does not react. Now, just about the question mark on your solubility chart. I've been doing this for a lot of years, folks. And I don't remember having a question that came up with a question mark as one of the things, as one of the products, okay? So if you would happen to get a question mark, double check your work to make sure you're swapping the right stuff. The second type of a double replacement is an acid plus a salt will give me a new acid and a new salt. Now notice, this doesn't tell you anything about the activity series, does it? Excuse me, the solubility chart. If you look at the next ones, two through six, they're all dealing with acids, right? They're all dealing with acids. Look at your solubility chart. Do you find any hydrogen on that chart? Okay. Hydrogen's not on there. So you don't have to worry about the solubility chart with these acids. Now, HCl plus NaI. Hydrochloric acid plus sodium iodide. So I have an acid and a salt. It's going to give me a new acid and a new salt. Basically, all I do is, once again, swap. Okay? Do the dance swap. So, I am going to have... Hydroidulic acid and... Sodium chloride. I just swapped the cations. Make sure you have the correct formulas written, which I do. Make sure it's balanced, which it is. My next one's a little bit tougher. Okay? A little bit tougher. Now I have sulfuric acid plus iron 2 chloride. So, somebody, what is one of my, what, what is my new acid? being formed. Hydrochloric acid, which is the formula what, Garrett? HCl. What is my new salt? Iron 2 sulfate. So what's my formula for iron 2 sulfate going to be? FeSO4. You guys are getting good at naming, aren't you? Okay, that stuff's getting easy. So, am I okay? Am I good? What's wrong? It's not balanced. Emily says it's not balanced. I can see that if I put a two here, that's going to balance, right?
Now look at this third one. Look at this third one. I threw this in there just to prove a point to you. All right, just to prove a point. What's the point that I'm trying to prove here? It's going to be the same thing, right? Because both of them have nitrate on the back end. Do you think that these will swap and do that to form the same things? No. It was kind of like the single replacement lab yesterday. Will magnesium metal replace itself? No. So, is this going to happen? No. So, WebAssign would try to sneak one in there like that. That's a no reaction. It's not going to happen. It makes the same thing. Now, the next one. The next one is a metal carbonate reacting with an acid. This gives me a salt, water, and carbon dioxide gas. And you're going to see what's happening here. I'm going to walk you through a little bit of a different way. Okay, Right here. I have hydrochloric acid. And the hydrochloric acid is with sodium carbonate. So I see this carbonate. This is a metal carbonate right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a salt. What is my salt going to be? Sodium chloride. Now, if I would make the other swap, what would my other product be? There would be my other product if I would complete the swap, right? Now, can you see where water and carbon dioxide come from this? Can you see that? Can you picture that? Well, that's exactly what happens, okay? That's exactly what happens. When this reaction occurs, we have sodium chloride form, and this... Carbonic acid, so to speak, is what H2CO3 is. That decomposes further to give us water and carbon dioxide gas. Now, the only problem here is what? It's not balanced. I can see that I need to have two sodiums. And if I will put a 2 there, that should balance it out, shouldn't it? Now, that was a metal carbonate. What's a metal bicarbonate? Well, here is a metal bicarbonate. And what bicarbonate is, it's just HCO3. So what is my acid, excuse me, check, check, what is my salt that I am forming here? Nickel sulfate, however, is nickel one that needs a Roman numeral? Absolutely. So which nickel do I have here? I've got to see what HCO3 is, right? I've got two, whatever HCO3 is, I've got two of them. What's the charge of HCO3? What's the charge of bicarbonate? What are you guessing for? Don't be pretty sure. Be positive. Anybody find bicarbonate on your pal?
Garrett found it. Okay, it's bicarbonate. It might say hydrogen carbonate too, and that bicarbonate's in parentheses. All right, hydrogen carbonate or bicarbonate it's in parentheses. It is a minus one, right, Garrett? So what nickel am I dealing with here? Nickel two. So I'm going to have my product be nickel two sulfate. What charge is sulfate? Minus two. So that is plus two minus two. My charges are equal. Nickel two sulfate. Water. Carbon dioxide. I flop my nickel and my hydrogen. So the nickel now goes with the SO4. And I have nickel too. Now this is going to probably be a little more challenging because I have to balance this. All right. I can see that my nickel is okay. So is my sulfate. My water and my oxygens and my carbon dioxides are not. I know that over here I have two carbons, don't I? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a two in front of my carbon dioxides because I know I need two carbons. When I do so, my carbons are balanced, okay? So I look and I say I have 2 and 2 is 4. I have 5 oxygens, right? How many hydrogens do I have? I have 2 here. How many do I have over here? 4, right? Now my hydrogens are balanced, aren't they? So the only thing I don't have balanced here are my oxygens. So I look over here. I have two, and here I have four. So two and four is six. How many oxygens do I have here? Six. So I now have balanced my equation. Who said wait? Go ahead, Garrett. No, because nickel is not in the parentheses here. Only that polyatomic. Okay? Even though it is nickel 2, the nickel 2 is a 2 plus charge. All right? That way you don't get confused with that. Two plus. Right. I didn't write a 2 because it's Roman numeral 2. We don't write no Roman numerals in our formulas. Here is a special type of a double replacement reaction that we even name it. It is what we call a neutralization reaction. We will deal with this third or fourth nine weeks in depth. A neutralization reaction is where we take an acid and a base and that base is usually a metal hydroxide, and we get salt and water. An acid and a base will give us salt and water. So, let me jump in my first one here. Sulfuric acid, H2SO4, plus iron-free hydroxide. See my metal hydroxide here? my metal hydroxide. Now, once again, all I'm going to do is I'm going to swap, swap my cations. So, somebody give me my salt. What is the salt being formed? Iron 3 sulfate. Iron 3 sulfate. 
And when I swatch my other swatch, swap my other one, it gives me H O H. What is H O H? What is H O H? H two O. Yeah, Maddie. Yeah. Yeah, there should be. I meant three, I wrote two. Now, are we balanced? No. Where am I going to start? Nope. It's not where I'm starting. I'm starting with SO4, my polyatomic. So, on my product side here, I have three, so I'm going to put a three here. Now I'm going to go to iron. How many iron do I have here? Two, so I'm going to put a two here. Now I've got my sulfate and my iron taken care of. I've got to balance out my waters. So if I look here, here is six hydrogen, and here is three hydrogen times two is six. So what's six and six? Twelve. So now I have twelve hydrogens here. Hopefully that balances out my water. So hopefully I have six water, or excuse me, oxygens. Okay. Here is three. Three times two is six. Now I've already taken care of those oxygens, haven't I? In the sulfate. Okay, so I'm only looking at these oxygens, so is that balanced? Yes. Acetic acid, H2, or excuse me, HC2H3O2, and aluminum hydroxide. I am going to plop once again. So my new salt is going to be aluminum acetate, right? AL, what's acetate charge-wise? Minus one, right? So I'm going to need three of them. My other product is water. I need the balance, don't I? I need the balance. So I come over here. Where am I starting balancing? Where do I start my balancing? With the acetate right here. Because I have C2H3O2. C2H3O2. So, I know I need three of those acetate ions. My aluminum's okay. Now go to hydrogen. How many hydrogens do I have on the reactant side? Okay. How many do I have on my reactant side? So be careful because don't I already have these taken care of? Okay. So I have three right here, and I have three over here. So that is six. Now I have six on my product side. Hopefully my oxygens, I have three oxygens, three oxygens. I have balanced that equation. What? How is that only six hydrogen? Because when I balance this, and this, I've already taken care of those hydrogens in there. I've balanced them. Okay? By keeping that polyatomic the same, I've already balanced those. How are they the same? C2H3O2. C2H3O2. That's the same polyatomic ion. So if I'm balancing that, 
I try to keep them together. Say, that whole unit. To this? Absolutely. It means there's three of that polyatomic ion. That's why I put the three in front of there. Where? I haven't taken care of these hydrogens. Okay? That hydrogen and those hydrogens are the ones that I haven't taken care of in my product side or my reactant side. Okay? I've taken care of the ones in the red already. So I guess, does that help? If I underline those, those green ones counteract or balance out the green ones in the reactant side? Okay, that's a tougher one to balance there. I'm going to continue on when we get back from break, folks, of Okay, we've got two more of these. Two more of these double replacement reactions. So, an acid with a sulfide salt. Well, what's a sulfide salt? It's a salt that has sulfide in it. SO2. Excuse me, S to minus. So, my sulfide salt here is potassium sulfide. So, hydrochloric acid with potassium sulfide. Once again, I am going to flop my cations. When I do so, I get H2. S, let me do that one second, okay, let me do my salt first, which is potassium chloride and H2S, that is my hydrogen sulfide gas, am I balanced, am I balanced, no, I have two potassiums, so I need two potassiums. I need two HCLs. Now I am balanced. Notice that this is a different one. Although that looks like it's similar, it is not a sulfide salt. It is a sulfite. What is sulfite? Sulfite is SO3 to the negative. So here is my sulfite. Right there, the SO3. So, my new salt being formed here would be what? What is my new salt that I'm forming in this double replacement reaction? Calcium nitrate. What's my formula for calcium nitrate? CA parentheses, NO3, 2. What else is formed? H2O and SO2. Is it balanced? So where are you going to start balancing? The NO3. I'm going to keep my polyatomic together because I have an NO3 right here. And I also have an NO3 right here. 
So if I put a two out in front of there, I'm good. The calcium is good. How many sulfurs? One here on reactant side. One here. So the only thing I have is water, right? Excuse me. The only thing I have is oxygen. So I have two, three, and I have three there. So that is indeed balanced. Agreed? Now, you have a double replacement reaction worksheet, 1 through 10. Okay? You need to work on that right now.